Well, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. And we say to everybody, Merry, Merry Christmas. <laughs> this is the day where we celebrate the birth of our Savior who becomes our Lord. I hope you have your family all around the table, all around uh, in the den, wherever you might be. Call your family on this Christmas morning. You can't start the Lord's birthday without celebrating the Lord. And so for just a few minutes, we're going to have our worship experience. I promise you, we will not be long this morning. So listen, even though it's Christmas, we still want to do three things. Text somebody, tell somebody, and what else, Bishop? Text somebody. Even the praise team knows it. So listen, get ready for some amazing worship on this Christmas day when we celebrate the birth of our Lord. We've got an amazing word. Don't go anywhere because I'm preaching as soon as the praise team gets done. So I need you to get this Christmas word. Jeremy, come on. Let's bless the people. Merry Christmas. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning and Merry Christmas to you. We're so glad that you decided to join us for worship this morning. We want to give God our best and we know that you want to give God your best. So in your own space, go ahead and create your own worship atmosphere so that God can be pleased, that he can be glorified, and that he may enter into the space that you have provided for him to come. God, we thank you. Come on, Steph. Come on. 
moment. We give your name praise in this moment. God, we thank you for the joy that you provide. God, we thank you for the love that you provide. God, we thank you for the hope that you provide. God, we thank you for being our strength. God, we thank you for being our hope. God, we thank you for being our love. God, we thank you for being our joy. And Lord, we know what you give the world can't take it away. declare it. The world can give it and the world can't take it away and the world can't take it away said the world can't the world can't take it away the world can't take it away the world can't take it away no the world can't take it away no the world can't take it away no the world can't take it away
change it to hope. Come on. Oh, he is my hope. He was born to be your hope. Yeah. Oh, he is my hope. One more time. Come on. He is my joy. Oh, he is my joy. So, God, we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your son. You were really born in human flesh, born to die, born for the sins of the world, born as a gift to humanity. And God, let us not forget that this is not a day for family first, even though we celebrate family. This is not a day for gifts first, even though we celebrate gifts. This is a day where we celebrate the birth of your son and our savior. And so let your word remind us today that in the words of that angel to those shepherds, for unto you is born on this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, if you signed on a little a little late, once again, I want you to go tag, tell, and text somebody. Pastor, we didn't show them our shirts. Who'd you say made these shirts? I forget who. Who, who made these? Yeah, while you're doing what it says on the screen, tag, text, and tell, check out our shirts. Won't it, won't it, won't it, won't it. <laughs> so, uh, listen, you signed on late, tag, text, tell somebody. Call somebody in your family. Tell them to join in on this Christmas morning worship experience. Listen, right before we get started, do not forget December the 31st, our New Year's Eve watch day party, 1 p.m. It's going to be absolutely nuts. We've got special guest Hezekiah Walker, who is going to be in the house leading our worship on that evening of oh, that afternoon of course i'll be preaching registration is already open you see it on the screen no walk-ups y'all better tell all your friends because i've already seen folk on social media talking about they're gonna fly in you can fly in if you're registered and if you're vaccinated but there will be no walk-ups it's gonna be a time at 1 p.m and so if you haven't registered, I need you to go ahead and begin registering right now for the New Year's Eve watch day experience. It's going to be amazing. Listen, you cannot come to the day where we celebrate the greatest gift ever given. You cannot come to the day where we celebrate a gift that is unmatched. God loved us so much that he gave us, gifted us his son there is absolutely no way you should have more gifts under a tree that some total in amount the gift you will give to the lord this morning if you are not willing to give to the lord more than you have spent under your tree something is wrong with your stewardship this morning you ought to be willing to give a liberal offering on this Christmas day morning. You know all of our giving platforms. They're on the screen right now. And so whether you are a disciple of this church, whether you are a friend or a partner of this church, right now, sow seed in good soil because the greatest gift that was given deserves your greatest gift. You ought to sow a liberal seed this morning. And thank God for the greatest gift ever given. Come on, go with me to Paul's letter to the church at Galatia. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4 beginning at verse 4. And there you'll find these words. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship and daughtership 
because you are his sons and daughters. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts. The spirit who calls out Abba, Father. I think I'll stop right there. No, give me the next verse. There it is. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are God's child, God has made you also an heir. Amen. Verse 4. But when the set time had fully come. I, I want to preach this Christmas morning and I want to preach with this thought in our minds. Don't discard the packaging. Don't, somebody said, uh oh, don't discard. Heather, that was you. I heard it. Don't discard the packaging I, I, I have this app uh, on, on my TV and on my iPad that has this uh, one of many new apps where you can get uh, live TV and you can get uh, certain channels and certain movies and on this app during the holiday season they add five new Christmas channels I get to watch all of my favorite Christmas uh, movies from The Bishop's Wife. That's an old one. Y'all may not know. All the way down uh, to The Preacher's Wife, all the way down to Best Man Holiday, uh, Almost Christmas. I was flipping through uh, one recently and stumbled upon one in black uh, and white. Didn't know, don't know what the title was because the title did not come up on it but in this scene it was a young man and his mother discussing the Christmas season the young boy asked his mother was she going to put his presents in wrapping paper he went on to ask his mother if she knew how wrapping paper got made he said to his mother there are 13 steps that are necessary for wrapping paper to be made. First, they have to cut down the tree, he said. After they cut down the tree, then they have to split it in two. Then they split it into four parts. After that, he said, they debark the tree. After that, he said, Mom, then they put it through the presses until it is made flat. He said after it is made flat, it is then cut into thinner pieces. Next, it goes through a heating process. After that, he said it is dyed and then cut again. He said after it is cut again, it's then mom put on spools. He said and after it is put on spools, it is sealed in plastic. And then after it is put in plastic, he said, Mom, it's finally sent to the store for you to buy. He said, after that, it gets to your house, then you cut it again. He said to his mom, he said, it goes through all of that so that it can be used to wrap a present. I thought to myself while watching and very intriguedly listening that while the gift will be the thing most desired and treasured by that little boy, he noticed that the gift did not go through as much as the paper it was wrapped in. The wrapping paper went through more of a process than the gift did. As a matter of fact, it was the wrapping paper that did more work than even the gift. To, to, to get the gift in wrapping paper, that had to go through 13 steps of stuff. I, 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 I thought about life, to go through this thing called life in order to be presented to God, our life will have to go through the same process 
as wrapping paper. We go through some things that flatten us. We go through some things that cut us. We go through some things that stripped us. We go through some things that change what we like and how we think and how we feel we were even like wrapping paper after already being cut we were cut again like we were cut before like the paper we were used by somebody who didn't even value what we went through they thought the outside was all there was to us and never took the time to understand who we were on the inside sometimes in life in order to get what it is you want or where it is you are supposed to be, you have to go through some things to get there. That This little boy wanted to make sure his mother valued, listen, how they got to the place of the gift and not discard the packaging as nothing of value. Because before there was ever a gift, the packaging was already going through something. I thought about Christmas as I watched that Christmas movie on that app. That on this Christmas day, we celebrate the gift. On this Christmas day, we shout over the present. We shout over the gift of Jesus Christ. We shout over the present of Jesus Christ. We shout over the gift of salvation. We shout even over the gifts that some of you will get under the tree. We are going to celebrate all the gifts with your name on them you're going to run to your tree this afternoon probably or maybe you've even done it this morning and you're going to be so anxious to get to the gift that you're going to wrap or, or you're going to rip the wrapping paper discard it as if it has no value the reality is if that wrapping paper could talk to you that wrapping paper would say to you how dare you rip me apart after everything I went through just to put your gift inside me we run to the gift but we discard the packaging and today we celebrate that great gift called Jesus Christ but I want to submit to you today that if you understood everything that went in the packaging of the gift you would celebrate the gift even more Lord have mercy if we understood everything God went through in the process of creating the package to wrap the gift of Jesus Christ in we would have more to shout about and here is the way Paul put it Paul said God was working on the packaging God was cutting up the packaging God was spooling the package and at the set time Jesus at the set time, the, the King James says, in the fullness of time. Yes, what that means is if there was a set time, that means before that time, the packaging was already being made. And I want to submit to you this morning that the packaging tells us something about the timing of God and how God operates in bringing things to their set time. There was a set time for Christ to be born. And let me tell you today, there is a set time for things to happen in your life. You better hear me. Just like there was a set time for Christ to be born, there is a set time for things to happen in your life. And whatever you do, don't disregard, don't discard, and don't disrespect the packaging that God has gone through to bring you to your set time. There's a set time for your breakthrough. There's a set time for your deliverance. There's a set time for your purpose. There's a set time for you to open up your business. And what I want to tell you today, that when you learn to understand the timing of God, your turn will happen in God's time. Let, let, let me show you this packaging what does this packaging, everything that came before the set time, 
What does this packaging say about the set time? Number one, the package is about God's providence. If y'all were in here, I'd tell you, let the church say providence, providence. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, pastor. Providence at the set time. Mm. That implies a predetermined time. We, we call it providence. God's, God's providence fascinates me. Providence, let me give you a working definition. Providence is when God moves within the constraints and boundaries of God's own natural laws to bring forth God's will. Let me say it again. It is when God moves, yes, within the constraints and boundaries of God's own natural laws to bring forth God's will. Providence is seen as God ordering our steps and navigating our stops into his will to bring us to an appointment to destiny in your life providence is God taking your stops and your steps it is God taking your mess and your miracles it is God taking your junk and your jewels it is God taking your problems and your possibility and interweaving them together to use all of them to get you to where here's how Paul calls providence and we know that all things yes work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose and at the set time everything that's working together gets you where God wants you to be it's providence the, the providence of God brought about the fullness of time or the set time for Christ to be born here it is it was set then it was walked out hmm God set the time. Then God went back in time. <laughs> and then God walked out the time preach boy to then get to the set time y'all 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 didn't get what I God set the time then went back in time okay so set time me God went ahead of time Woo! set the time then came back to time then walked you through time to get you to the set y'all don't know when to shout you know why you should have shouted in your house because that means your blessing your breakthrough your deliverance your healing your restoration it's already been set as a matter of fact you ought to write it in the comments it's already been set whatever you need whatever he's promised whatever he's gonna give you the time has already been set said well bishop if the time has already been set then why hasn't it happened yet it's because God goes ahead of time sets the time comes back to time walks you through time and gets you to the set time now let me tell you what that means that means that no matter how things look don't ever doubt God or give up hope. Y'all better hear me. God's already down. Yeah. Jesus, I love it. He already went into 2022, into 2023, set a time for your blessing then came back to 2021 and is going to walk you through the rest of 2021 then he's going to walk you through 2022 and when you get to where he set the time even the devil in hell can't stop what God's got for you Ooh, God, God lets everything happen at the right time and God's right time will always be the perfect time See, sometimes it looks like God is delaying and doors aren't opening fast enough. Ways are not being made quickly enough. It's all in the plan. God orchestrated and navigated everything that led up to this time. I can prove it to you. Come on, yell, yell right in your house. Prove it. Here it is. Um, Adam, watch how God goes ahead of time. 
set the time for Christ to be born, then came back to time and walked everything through time, used everything that happened in time to still get to the set time. Adam messed up, but there had to be an Abraham. When Abraham went as far as he could go, there had to be an Isaac. When Isaac went as far as he could go, there had to be a Jacob. When they had gone as far as they could go, there had to be a Saul. When Saul showed his humanity, there had to be a David from the house of Jesse. When David is gone as far as he could go, he had gone as far as he needed to go because now the bloodline had been established so that some thousand or so years later in a little town called Bethlehem, there would be a man by the name of Joseph from the house of David who God providentially placed in the path of a virgin named Mary. Y'all didn't get what I just said. God went ahead of time, set up the birth, came back to time, walked with Adam through time. Adam messed up, he walked to Abraham. Abraham messed up, he walked to Isaac. Isaac messed up, he walked to Jacob. Jacob messed up, he kept on walking. And he walked long enough so that everybody that messed up in the walk, God already had something else waiting. I came to tell you today, God is walking with you through time on the way to your set time and nothing will stop it at the right time. Ooh, I'm getting happy at the right time. When the fullness of time, when, I, when all things were in order, God orchestrated them. See, here's, here's what that means. Now, never, y'all better write this down. Never see your life simply as a series of random events. Woo! Your life is a process under divine providence and divine observation. So every time it looks like the enemy might have the upper hand in your life, just remember that the providence of God never loses control. Here it is. Here's your bar for Christmas. God can cross up what the devil sets up. Come back. Let me say it one more time. Yes. Even when the devil looks like he's getting the best of you, you got to remember God has already set the time. Even when it looks like the devil's going to win, you got to remember God's already set set the time and because God's got all power and because God's got power for providence God's got the ability and the authority to cross up what the devil set up I done got ahead of myself you know when they don't do this to the end of the sermon but that's what the whole Christmas story is all about it's about a cross up that messed up a setup I'm trying not to get happy because 33 years later on a hill called Calvary when the devil thought he had won when the devil thought he had set God up he didn't know what did they do they put Jesus on a cross because God knows how to cross up everything the devil sets up it's it's about providence at the set time God's already set the time for everything in your life then he comes back to where you are in time walks you through time to get you to the set time. Here's the second thing. The packaging is about God's process. Yeah. Um, right, right from the beginning of time, when you read the word of God, we discover by every move God made that God is a God of process. See, we, we get caught up. Let's just, let's, let's be honest. We get caught up on this day and on this event. You gonna spend a whole lot of money on this day, this event. From lights to food to gifts to eggnog mixed with some other stuff in it. And uh, somebody said, yeah, I don't wanna look up and see who that was. <sighs> we, we, do, we, we do everything about this even we get caught up on this day we get caught up on this event called christmas he, even the world who don't even celebrate jesus get caught up on this event even the world who doesn't believe in jesus get caught up in this event but what you miss 
is all that it took in the process to get up to this event. Here's the reality. You can't even have an appreciation for this event without the recognition of the process. Now let me tell you why this is important. Somebody saying, why is this important, Bishop? This is important because it also has implications for your life. You need to start seeing your life as one awesome combination of a process interspersed by a series of events. So that you don't define yourself by any event because your life is not about the events of your life. The events of your life are just benchmarks in the process. Okay, let me see if I can make, make it plain. Um, you, you succeed in something, okay? You pass an exam. You open a business. You gain a promotion. You get married. You accomplish an ambition. You buy a house. All of those are wonderful events that should be celebrated. They happened on a certain day at a certain time, and they all have anniversaries. But that promotion on the job was the result of some years of hard work process. <laughs> that exam was the result of a semester of study process God I feel like preaching that that graduation was a result of four years of getting your butt kicked in the classroom process that ambition took some years to plan and save and sacrifice process that that wedding getting married uh, took some years of you becoming a man or becoming a woman somebody ought to say process you you had to go through the process and if you don't appreciate the process you'll never appreciate the event that resulted in it everything success or failure has a process behind it everything even attitudes have a process you mean as hell because of a process some stuff you went through Woo! Preach Rudolph McKissick. You, you, you are negative because of some stuff you went through. You don't trust anybody because of some things you went through. Everything, success and failures rise and fall on process so then learn to manage the process respect the process and then celebrate the process and not just the result come here Christmas is a great event but would be nothing without the process it would have no continued meaning without the process so here it is so when you see me shout don't get it twisted it ain't just about the car it ain't just about the house it ain't just about the promotion it's not just about the job it's not just about the marriage when you see me shout I'm shouting over everything that I went through to get me to that place as a matter of fact you ought to stand up in your house and give God a shout why because that house you're in is the result of a process that apartment you're in in is the result of a process you riding in your car you ought to wave one hand because you're riding in a process here's the way the hymn writer put it through many dangers yes toils and snares that's process here's the way bible put it eyes have not seen ears have not heard that's called process you ought to give god on a early Christmas morning a, a shout over your process I'm done Woo. the packaging is about God's providence the packaging is about God's process here's the last thing and I'm done the packaging tells us something about God's person look at the text but when the set time had fully come God I love this God sent his son born 
of a woman. Stop right there. Stop right there. Come on, let's do some theology. God sent <laughs> his son, born of a woman. God, this is going to get good. Um, you can't send something that doesn't already exist. So what God or what Paul is telling us concerning Jesus, he existed before he was born. See, we don't like this kind of preaching that just gives us doctrine and theology. Let me say it again. Look at it. He was sent by God, born of a woman. Jesus, have mercy. Which means Jesus did not come into existence in the womb. <laughs> Jesus was in existence before he got here. Y'all didn't get it. He was always and already in the mind of God. Genesis, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. You better hear it. God didn't just act on it until the right time. No, you better hear what I'm just trying to tell you. He already existed, but at the set time, God manifested what was already in the spirit. Come here, I said it too fast. He was already in the spirit, but at the set time, God put it manifest in the natural. Your blessing already exists in the spirit. Your breakthrough already exists in the spirit. Your deliverance already exists in the spirit, but at the set time, God's going to let it be born into the natural. See, that's how, that's how he was fully human and fully God. Okay, he was human enough to relate to me, but God enough to die for me. Okay, um, let me see if I can put it to y'all this way. That scripture where it says, um, that his mother and father, his earthly father, were looking for him. And when they found him, he was over in the temple teaching. And uh, we're never given, um, Tim, what the conversation was. Um, but but I, got a, I got a feeling, Quinn, that the conversation went something like this. Um, um, they, they said, we never heard nobody speak like this. So they started asking him questions. And here, here's how it went. They said, What's your name? He said, well, on my mother's side, my name is Jesus. <laughs> but on my father's side, they call me Emmanuel. They said, well, how old are you? Yes. He said, on my mother's side, I'm 12 years old. But on my father's side, I've just always been. They started scratching their heads. They said, well, where are you from? He said, on my mother's side, I'm from Bethlehem. But on my father's side, I'm from the throne room. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. They said, well, now, yes, we've got some information. We know your name on your mother and your father's side. We know how old you are on your mother and your father's side. We know where you're from on your mother and your father's side. They said, we got one more question. They said, what's your plan? He said, on my mother's side. I'm going to be crucified but on my father's side in three days I'm going to get up y'all ain't happy in your house he, they said well tell us one more thing where you going when you leave here they said it depends on what you mean when I leave here on my mother's side I'm going back to her house but when I leave here on my father's side I'm going to catch a cloud and I'm going back to glory. I got to get out of here, y'all. But I need somebody who knows that Jesus was fully human and fully God to shout right now on his mother's side. He asked a woman at the well to give him some water. But on his daddy's side, he walked on water and told it to be still 
on his mother's side. He asked the disciples on a beach one day to cook him some fish. But on his daddy's side, he took two fish and five loaves of bread and felt a multitude. But on, on his mother's side, he came in a manger. But on his daddy's side, he's coming back on the clouds in the middle of the air. And so I, I, I can shout today because the Savior that was born, he was human enough to relate to me. He was human enough to talk to me. He was human enough to understand me. He was human enough to cry with me. But then I'm so glad that he was human enough to understand me. But he was God enough to die for me. So I, I can't leave him in that manger. I can't leave him in that cave. I know that the word says for unto us a child is born. I know that the word said that the government would be upon his shoulders and in that shall be called it shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty God the prince of peace but there's one more name I got to give him on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross it was the emblem of suffering I would not act like this on Christmas but I love that old cross at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light they hung him high they stretched him wide he hung his head in the locks of his shoulders he died till the earth started rocking he died Till the stars started crying. He died. Till the sun started dripping. He died early on a Friday afternoon. They laid him in a bar or two. But early, Lord have mercy. Sunday morning, he got up with power. Is there anybody that knows power? Who knows his name? His name is Jesus. 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 Is there anybody here? It's chill, chill, rocking a weary life. Chills, shouting in a time of storm. Chills, rose of shell. Chills, lily of the valley. Chills, bright and morning star. Chills, way out of nowhere. Chills, Mary's baby. Chills, Moses' bush on fire. Chills, Abraham's vindicator. Chills, Abraham's ram. Chills, Jacob's ladder. Chills, Moses' rod. Jesus, Joshua's fire. Jesus, 
David Shepherd, Jesus, Jeremiah's fire, Jesus, my mama's God, Jesus, my daddy's God. Is there anybody here who knows it now? name is here. <laughs> At the set time. You still in 2021. God done set some stuff for you in 2022 already. Woo! He went up to 2022, set up your house, set up your debt cancellation, set up your child's deliverance, set up your child getting out on their own, set up your child getting a job, set up your child getting a promotion. Set up your business, set up multiple locations. But then after he said it, he came back to where you are. And he's walking you through time. <laughs> and all God needs you to do is trust the process. And when it looks like it's too hard, when you wonder if he's going to make a way. Just remember, he was sent from God, born of a woman. He existed before he ever got here. Which means every blessing, every gift, every present that belongs to you. It exists before it gets to you. You talking about can he handle it? <sighs> He's Jesus enough to relate to you, but God enough to die for you. <laughs> So God, we thank you that on Christmas we can celebrate your providence, your process, and your person. Because Jesus Christ is just the human manifestation of your Godness. Coming down through 40 and two generations, like the old Baptist preacher said, wrapped in swaddling flesh, laid in a manger to later be laid in a tomb. Jesus. Born in blood out of a womb, died in blood on a hill called Calvary. Thank you today. We're not just going to celebrate the gift, we're going to celebrate the package. Because all of it is shout worthy. All of it is praise worthy. All of it is worship worthy. Woo. God, we thank you. God, we thank you today. Thank you for the package that brought us the person. My debt you paid. My debt you paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. <laughs> Did you pay? Listen before they sing it anymore. That's how we're going to worship our way out of here today. If you don't know Jesus Christ, my God, this is a mighty good day to know him. If you don't know the gift that was the result of the package, this is a mighty good day to give your life to Jesus Christ. 
What a testimony you would have that your born again day came on the day we celebrate the born day of the Savior of the world. You've never accepted. You might be a family member visiting with your family in town and you decided to watch worship this morning and you're saying, you know what, I need Jesus Christ. I can't keep playing with my life. I can't keep playing church. I need to be in the kingdom. Or this morning, you were saved, but during this pandemic, you've kind of gotten out, out of the sink of discipleship, out of the cycle of, of being a part of a church. And you're saying, Bishop, I need a church. But you're saying, Bishop, I'm visiting my family. I don't live here. Hey, we got you covered. It's called the Bethel Experience Everywhere. Or you might be from Jacksonville and just don't have a church. All you got to do is one simple step. We've made it so easy. You want salvation or you want discipleship? Text what you see on the screen. TBC Decision to 54244. TBC Decision to 54244. You're going to get a link, a text back with a link in it. I need you to click that link. When you click that link, it's going to open up to a video welcome from Pastor. And our pastor join me here as we get ready to close. And uh, we're going to welcome you. And then you're going to get a form. I need you to fill that form out. Uh, because then the Beamons, our AIM ministry, is going to welcome you into the body of Christ. And to Bethel. And what it means to be Bethel what it means to be a disciple and you can become a part of what we do here at this church listen on behalf of our entire family all of our children on behalf of Bishop Senior and Lady Estelle we wish everybody the most amazing Christmas be safe be smart mask up unless you know everybody's in that room that's vaccinated and even then mask up but enjoy the day. Share the love of the Lord and the love of family. All right? You came from heaven to earth to show the peace.
Lord, I lift your Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, we'll declare that we'll lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. No name is higher than yours. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name. 